Mr. Crenshaw? Yes. This is Bill Stewart. Yeah, Bill. I don't know if uh, Mike Partington called you. Uh, yeah. Told you I was going to call you about an interview. Yeah. I've been missing you all week, I guess. Yeah, I've been in and out a lot. i just fixing to leave now. Go over to Texas. Oh, yeah? Pick up stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Got a bitch. I got get bread. I should have got over there yesterday or the day before, really. But I tied up with other stuff. Couldn't uh -huh. go when I... Maybe too late, but I'm gonna get back with him. I don't know. Well, uh, if you want to tell me another time, I could call back. I'd be you happy might to try me. Uh, in the morning, I'm I'll probably stay overnight. But oh, maybe let's see. Your time is what time there now? I think you're an hour later than right. Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, maybe. Oh, either before noon, around 11 or so, or... Your time if, or mine? Yeah, mine. And if, uh, if I'm not back by then, why, well, early afternoon, I should be back. Okay. All right. What, what do you... Mike told me, but, uh, is it a magazine or a book? What is it, you uh, we're, we're putting out a magazine, a friend of mine named Casey Couturier. Yeah. He's been putting out a book for about seven years now. Yeah. Uh -huh. It started out uh, several working breeds, bulldog breeds, and yeah. uh, then he got it down to just uh, pit bulls and those big American bulldogs, yeah. and those big white dogs. Yeah. And then they couldn't get along, the people who had the two different breeds very well. And, you know, the one didn't want to hear about the other one much. So he split them into two magazines uh -huh. and uh, called the Pitbull and Pitbull Quarterly yeah. and uh, asked me to help him uh, upgrade it and make it more competitive with the other, yeah. uh, you know, Pitbull magazines yeah. like the Journal and all that stuff. So that's what we're doing. And uh, yeah. as far as I know... Uh, has anyone ever interviewed you before? Well, yeah, not not this, but yeah, uh, Ed Mullins did one time. Did he? And, yeah, and then uh, <coughs> a boy, a Massachusetts uh, friend, protege of Lee Kobe's. Yeah, uh, Lee's supposed to got out a book. I don't know if he ever got it. Got it out or not yet? Mm -hmm. yeah, have you heard of a new Kobe book? No, sir, I haven't. Yeah, I don't know if he got it, but they were working on it. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I've always been real interested in pedigrees. Uh, I always aspired to be a good breeder myself for about the last 20 years. Uh, yeah. Breeding's what always what has interested me. You you live in Arkansas, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. I think Mike said you used to live in Oklahoma. Yes, sir. At one time I did. I've been out here about 15 years now. Uh, have you, what part of Arkansas are you in? Uh, just a little bit north of Little Rock. You're close to an old friend of mine's, then, probably. Mr. Wallace? No. Uh, no, he don't. Friend. He hadn't had dogs in years. I've never had him since he went to Arkansas, and he's been up there a little longer than that now, I guess. He had had him with me back in the 50s when he was down here in the edge of Texas. He lives up there. Are you anywhere close to the Rosebud? Yes, sir. Yeah. Ro Romance? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not too far from there. About uh, 25 miles from Rosebud. He, I remember being back to visit her, and I told him I would, but... I think, I, I think I've heard of him. I haven't made it, but he, uh, I don't know, when he told me when he bought that place, he said, well, he said, I'm about halfway between Rolands and Rosebud. And I said, well, with it, those names, I'll never forget it. And I know right. one of his, his mailing dress is one. It's a uh, rural, but it, it's out of one, and his phone is out of the other one. Mm-hmm. His name's Hobbs, Harlan Hobbs, or Jay Hobbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he had uh, dogs back with me in the 50s, and we were good friends. He, uh, he had a last dog 
Well, I guess he had to his old Leno. He was a brother to Maurice Carver's cracker dog. He was there at St. Really? Uh-huh. Out of what, Dibo and Black Widow? Uh-huh. uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, and then he had a bitch at that same time that he got from Howard, from Heinzel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was, uh, oh, she was a granddaughter to the old Colonel dog, her daddy. Griffo was sad by Colonel. And then she was more Dibo. Uh, her mama, if I remember right, was a sister to the old Big Polly. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Her mother was Molly O. Was let her make the Big Polly, which was that old Bambi and Dibo. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Bill. I'm going to run on as I'll get to uh, just okay. come in and fix and change clothes and okay. get out of here, but try me tomorrow. I will, sir. And if anything happens, I don't get back or something in time where I, I should be here Monday morning for a while. I, I think Mike misunderstood me. I told him because you were calling the day weekdays, and I told him uh, 9, 10 o'clock uh, Saturday or Sunday, no. you, you should be able okay. to catch me. Okay. But uh, I think Monday I'll probably, the only day I know I'm going to be tired next week is Wednesday, but it's good to talk to you. Well, and I sure appreciate you doing this for me. You know old Cecil Pond? Yes, sir, I do. I've met Cecil. I knew Cecil back before he moved back to Arkansas when he was in California. Mm-hmm. First met him in some shows at Hines on Richardson. Hager and them guys put on there at Phoenix. Yeah, I met him at a little show a year and a half or so ago. Yeah. Some, well, uh, some boys down, I know down here in South Arkansas uh, know him and yeah. talk to him from time to time. Another boy you might know, Jerry Bean. Oh, sure, I know Mr. Bean. Yeah. Well, Cecil sure. got Jerry started, isn't it? Yeah, right. And there's a guy named Barry Rain. <clears throat> Barry Rain's up in uh, Tulsa. No. I think he lives there in Arkansas, but... Well, he might, maybe he lives up in uh, real far up in the northwest Arkansas. He lives Arkansas. in the north, northeast, I think it is. I believe he told me once where he lived. I forgot he's called me several times. He's... I think he's up around uh, the Tulsa area now. He Mr. might Crenshaw. be. He could be. I know a boy that went up there a few years ago to, to match into him. Uh, went up there with Mr. Fowler. You know Les Fowler? Yep. I yeah. know Les and his boy both. And that's where they went up there in the Tulsa area somewhere. Uh, in fact, one of the last shows that I went to over here in West Texas, yeah. uh, Les and his boy and a, a friend of Chicago at three matched up there. Mm-hmm. And they the dog, it was their bitch that the guy had worked and handled Chicago. They won that one. They lost the other two. They was matched at the fighting brother and sister team and uh, against the brother and sister team. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, that most most, all four dogs was pretty heavy, my breed. Oh, really? Yeah. The ones that won... It wasn't Bad Ronnie in that bunch, was it? Yep, Bad Ronnie's. It was a daughter and son of his. I'll be darned. And out of one of their old bitches. Mm-hmm. But they, they were half breed. And I told Les and them that night after we was talking this to them, well, I said, well... Stuff at Beaches bred very similar. Uh, I'll be doing they that. were boy was in the dogs a while down in Odessa area, Texas. Had bred this pair of dogs out of a bitch he got up here and a, a dog wasn't bred here, he was bred out in Las Vegas, Nevada, but he was strictly my breeding. Mm-hmm. In fact, I had a half brother to him for years, a dog I called Nightflyer, was uh, a, a half brother to him, but he was closer than that because my 
my dog was three quarter nugget and uh, the other old dog that he had down there was out of nugget but his little brother they bred back to his mama's what produced the dog the night fly dog I had. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that man from Odessa's name? Mm, yeah, I, I, I just can't call it right now. Mm. sending you a, a subscription to the magazine if you'd like uh -huh. for, for doing this interview for me Pre appreciate it we'll, we'll be glad to send you one All right. um, as a matter of fact if it's okay uh, Mike sent me a couple of pictures of you I was thinking about putting in the magazine maybe even on the cover I think he mentioned when he called me the other this last time I think he said he was working in Odessa. Yeah, yeah, he is. And uh, he told me that he, that they'd bid on a job up when I met him before. They did a job up at the Navajo refinery up here at Artesia. Mm -hmm. About 30, 40 minute drive north of me. And he told me they had bid another job there that they might be doing later if they got it uh later on uh -huh. anyway i think he mentioned it uh that he i need he they took some pictures when they was here that uh, well, was it okay to use them in the magazine yeah i thought okay um let's see where to start um 
I became familiar with your dogs uh, in part from reading uh, Pete Sparks' old book. Yeah. Uh, that was before I got into dogs, but I got some, you know, back copies that they've been selling for years and read about some of the dogs like the Gimp dog uh -huh. and Reno and some of those dogs. And then, of course, uh, your uh, dogs show up in some of Maurice Carver's pedigrees. Uh, I wanted to ask you more about that. Um, you, can, you can tell in the pedigrees that Maurice seemed to be using your stud dogs to cross into his Dibo Widow blood. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how many of them actually showed up. Uh, we know like Miss Spike and Red Lady were bred to Reno. I guess when uh, Leo Kennard had him out there matching him, I know him and uh, Maurice were pretty close. Yeah. And uh, Stu Fowler, uh, Red Lady was bred to Stu Fowler. And uh, Carver also had snow at one time, uh -huh. although he hardly ever shows up in any pedigrees. It's known that he, he didn't had, have good luck breeding snow. He, he missed as much as he hit with him. He just didn't have puppies much, huh? No, Maurice didn't. And so that's why he, Bill Petrie wanted to buy him and offered Maurice a pretty good price for him. I mean, that, that day and time for for an old dog, that, that's all he was good for by then was a brood dog. I think he gave Maurice a thousand for him. And uh -huh. He, uh, the first eight bitches Bill bred, he got every one of them had to. <laughs> well, that, that brings me to another point. Uh, it's pretty well known that Maurice used to change his pedigrees up. Yeah. I wonder what's the possibility he was getting pups off of snow and he just changed them to something else, like Bully Sun. Well, I don't know. He did that with some of my breedings. But I, I really don't know that he ever did it with snow, but he did with some of the yeah. others but, uh, that had my stuff, I mean, that he didn't show. Of course, I knew it, and Maurice told me, but uh, it, uh, well, Leo didn't like it. He, he told me, said, I don't know why you let that long arm some of bitch get away with that, and, uh, but uh, he did do it uh, well, different I've, times. I've always wondered about dogs like Arts Missy and yeah, they're, Stompinato and they're Dexter. not bred like Maury shows them. some of the later dogs, like Stompinato, I always wondered how he got to be a pied dog, you know, being out of supposedly this tight bred Eli stuff, you know, bully, yeah. Black Bully Son and Black Eli Jr. and uh -huh. Brindle Brindy, and then here comes this pied dog, you know, he pops out of Black Shine, you know. 
this little bitty, you know, black 37 pound dog throws this great big monster black and white pie dog, you know. Yeah. Always seemed kind of strange to me. Do you have any idea how he might be? Well, born? Stomper, uh, he showed his mama bred a different boy. Uh, I think it was, uh, I don't remember whether it was his mama or his grandma, but the bitch at Maurice, he, uh, Carver's Beauty. Uh, in Stomper's pedigree, he shows her bread different. Uh, She's really a Reno Miss Spike dog or something? Yeah, she was Reno, and uh, he showed her what her iron head, I think. Yeah. Was what he showed her. I think you're yeah. right. Stomper, I believe that's right. That's a bitch. He never had a good dog. <laughs> Any of the good ones, you knew they worked. Iron Head, you talking about? Yeah. 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 You know, I, I, and his dogs, too. You knew his pup. If you knew Iron Head, you knew yeah. his pup. If they were his, uh, by just looking at him. Yeah. Well, he's a big, big dog. And uh, for one thing, I mean, he's bigger than any of my stuff. He had bigger pups and dogs, but he also... Uh, he had a distinct marking in his head, and the majority of his pups carried it. You know, Iron Head, he was kind of, uh, Howard, <coughs> Hines uh, had some dogs to come that color. It's where they've been close bred, inbred, line bred on the, uh, stuff like Dibo that they would try to come uh, kind of like a black and tan uh, dog or black and tan markings except they would be brown and tan mm. kind of kind of a yeah, uh, he, brownish red with uh, the lighter shading yeah he had kind of that mask around his face and he had kind of that and mask, he had I call it yeah. had kind of a oh, like makeup or something. V shape there in yeah. their head stopped the head where it shaded and mm -hmm. then got darker and like I say most of uh, the Ironhead's pups that, that actually were his uh, carried that same coloration marking. But he wasn't much of a producer, huh? No, he wasn't. He wasn't. I, I never liked him as a dog. Uh, we rolled him out with uh, another dog that Leo had there. Place, I guess about three different times I was, when I was down there, we rolled them and I told him, Maurice, when I said, I wouldn't feed those big son bitches for him. I, I said, uh, <laughs> because they, they fought like curs, they'd get really? up and stand on their hind feet and grapple and growl and grasp for hopes and things. And, Mm -hmm. Maurice managed to win two or three with him, but he picked his fights. Yeah. He was bred good, see, I mean, that type breeding, and, and Maurice, he was selling breeding. Yeah. And uh, he won a fight with him in Mexico, and then he took him out to California, had Freddie match him out there. Well, Maurice whipped them on condition. I guarantee you that the other dog was the better dog, but uh, that's the time they got right. <laughs> they got Iron Head and Gimp Bow in that deal, but then Freddie Joe's got some guys that they, they got about. Yeah. And uh, uh, Maurice and Pat had gone on up to Las Vegas. Gonna spend two or three days up there at. Uh, he called Maurice up there and told him, he said, I got your old dog out of prison. And Maurice <laughs> said, you did? He said, yeah. He said, uh, who could you get there to pick him up at San Antonio? And uh, Maurice said, oh, and he told him who. And he said, let me know when you sending him and I'll have me. I said, he said, you better get in touch with him now because he's on his way. <laughs> he told him that he'd already taken him 
dad to L.A. airport pretty well. He said he's on his way. Yeah. So that was nice of him, wasn't it? That's how they got him. <laughs> got him back. Yeah. And then, like I say, they got they didn't get all the dogs that died, but they got silver, and they did get Ironhead and, and old Gip both. The uh, Freddie had bought Gip then from Leo. Fred won two with him, first two. He lost the third fight with him, uh, which was his sixth fight. Leo, he was a champion when he bought him from Leo. And, Six time up, uh, he had uh, uh, Ralph Green was handling him. He had Ralph, in fact, Ralph had conditioned him. He had Ralph pick him up because he, he just, well, he made uh, the last scratch. And uh, that's what he told Ralph to pick him up because he just went off, got veered off and hit missed the dog, hit the side of the pit, and, uh, but anyway, he, he, he won that one when they got confiscated. They'd already had his fight and iron heads both, and, uh, they'd both won, but he, uh, he died at Leo's place after, later. Oh, but it did? Yeah. yeah. Freddie called me and wanted to know if I wanted said me, and I said no. <laughs> uh, I know Freddie I'm full up, I got as many as I can. He said, well, I know you bought a lot of those dogs. I said, I do. I think he's as good as I've ever raised, but he was no good at that time, I mean, because he, he was... <laughs> Four fights in 13 months. <laughs> Freddie fought him to death. Leo had yeah. just won with him when Fred bought him from Leo. He just won. He'd whipped that Gaboon dog mm -hmm. down there. And uh, from that time till the third match that Freddie fought, it was 13 months time he fought four fights. Well, the dog was in training all the time. And uh, anyway, couldn't fight him anymore, and he were, had gone sterile after his. He did. Uh, after his first keep, first condition. Huh. That Leo and I, I still owned him then. We yeah. fought him together, and uh, then later I sold him to Leo. The last uh, Leo owned him. The last two fights he fought him. But anyway, he went sterile. I, I'd bred one bitch to him before before he was ever matched, and that's the only litter of pups he ever signed. Mm -hmm. uh, after I brought him back home after the first match, well, that's what I found it out. I bred a couple of my bitches to him, didn't take them, and the boys from over in Texas brought a bitch over here and bred to him, and she didn't take them. Mm -hmm. And he never did. Leo tried how to keep her. He let guys that he didn't even like break bitches to. <laughs> he did? Yeah. yeah. I told him because Fred about down in New Orleans he told me that these guys had been up at Leo's and, and bred a bitch to get. And I said, I don't think so. And he said, yeah, they did. I said, hey, I said, Jimmy and Leo don't even like those guys. Neither one of them. I said, there ain't no way he'd let him read Gimp. He said, well, they swear they did. And I said, well, I'll find out the next time I talk to you. So when Leo called me, why well, I asked him. I said, did you read a bitch? He said, uh, yeah, it's a Hawkshaw. He always called Gimp Hawkshaw. Mm -hmm. Hawkshaw, and I said, uh, well, Jimmy said that that they said they did, and I told him I thought they was lying, and then I, I said, I told him, you didn't even like him. He says, that's right, but he says, they, they might, their bitch might be the one that would hit. Yeah. <laughs> Just wants a puppy, though. But they did, 
the day after Freddie got him, he t he had a bet. He was real high on out there, and he took him to him two different times. I don't know. He evidently his sperm was where it would die before, because I know Fred called me that same time. He said, Mr. Crenshaw, I want you to know, I looked in the microscope today, and I saw those little devils wiggling. Yeah. He said, I'm going to show you and old Leo Connor how to get puppies out of Gip. I said, fine, I hope you do, Fred. You send me one and send Leo one. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't know about that. I said, yeah, about good, I know. You better, you ever want to get a dog from either one of us again. <laughs> but uh, he didn't, he didn't. <laughs> Brad bred two or three bitches to him, a couple of his partners. Brad, but they never did get pups. He had that one, had that one litter before that happened. That's the only litter Gimp ever said. Mm -hmm. What would you say are some of your other best dogs? Uh, Snow and Major were both. Major? Yeah, Freddie Jones Major. Yeah, uh, I remember reading about him. He whipped, uh, let's see, Fred lost with him to uh, the last time he fought him. Major is about he's between six and seven then, and he hadn't fought him, and it'd been over two years since he'd mm -hmm. hung and two, and he'd long way off. gotten stale. And Fred told me, he said, as soon as he started fighting, he said, I knew he'd lost a lot of his ability. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he was fighting uh, Steinberg and Patrick's Diamond Dog. Right. Mm -hmm. That uh, they'd gotten from Maurice. Uh, which was uh, out of uh, Miss Pike and Reno. Right. And uh, so Fred, uh, and that's the funny thing, Maurice had told them when they, when they bought them. Uh, see, when they first started in the dogs, they were partners, Steinberg and mm -hmm. Pat Patrick. Uh, Maurice called him the hippie and the Jew. <laughs> and they, they, of course, later on, they, uh, they busted up the partnership, and still later, Patrick moved to Arizona, and mm -hmm. God, he'd been all over so He lived here in New Mexico for a while. Yeah, I know. I think he's back out in Arizona, the last I heard. But anyway, Maurice told us that you can whip any dog at his weight on the west coast, but leave Freddie Joe's major dog alone. Maurice was a firm believer of old major and snow both. He is their ability. Yeah, he said, leave, leave him alone. I mean, he said, you can whip anything else, but they, like a lot of newcomers, they wanted to make sure so they who they match. And it turned out all right for him. Of course, the next time up, Freddie yeah. beat him. Freddie whipped him with Black Bart, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was Reno's brother's pup. But Bart was out of Susie, my old Susie bitch, and, and Buzz was a litter mate brother to, to old Reno and, uh, and Polly. Mm hmm. But the old Polly was red and white, spotted buckskin, white, really. And uh, Polly, too, was black and white, spotted. And more spotted. She looked like she'd be half Dalmatian or bird dog or something. He real. You got a lot of special. spotted dogs, it seems like. Did that come from the old Colby blood? Or? No. No, the Colby dogs, most of the stuff that I had. Down, I mean, first generation, second generation off cold. Most of them were bred or red, few buckskin. Really? Yeah. My, I had two dogs. Well, I had one pure Kobe dog, and I had a half Kobe Heinz cross, a uh, red boy. Uh, he, he was sired by die. Also, my old rust dog was sad, but that, but uh, Red Boy was uh, 
bitch that Frank Ferris. Frank Ferris had the was the one that started the ADBA. Right. Mm -hmm. And he married Miss Colby, you know. Yep. And uh, John P. had died, and, and Frank's first wife had died, and the two couples had been friends when they were young people, and so they got to go together and married, and, and he and Miss Colby, or Les Ferris then, uh, started the ADBA. It had its first several years then they sold it to Ralph Greenwood. He had a bitch he called uh, they called her Sugar. They called Kettle Day, but she was registered Pine Hill Fanny. Mm -hmm. And that was old Red Boy's mama. He bred her to die. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course Lewis still had dime and Margie and some of those dogs in. That's what well, West Dog was out at Cyber Diving out of Margie. He's a red bread, but the old red boy dog, he was red with heavy white trim. Mm. He's colored like, uh, marked up like his mama, but he had more white on him than she did. And she was a pretty good sized bitch. He was pretty big, pretty good sized dog. Well, your dog's, uh, had some Colby in them, obviously. Uh, what were the other foundation lines that you used? Mainly Lightner and some Feely, a little bit of Old Family Red in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the old Lep and Lil Bitches, the two sisters that I had, they, their mother was about, <coughs> she wasn't pure Lightner, she was about Seven, eight, Lightner, and the off blood was Feely Red Nose, mm -hmm. and uh, their daddy was the same, just in the reverse. He was about seven, eight, Red uh, Nose, light, uh, Feely breeding, and his off. They had a little shot of lighter in him. Mm -hmm. So I always considered those bitches uh, about half lighter. And uh, Feely was a, had a little shot of red nose boat. Every that came in on, uh, uh, oh, I believe it was Montgomery's Hobo or something. Anyway, it's silver and bred uh, a bitch to him. And, uh, so I had most of my dogs for years have been predominantly like there and freely with a little uh, shot of COVID or a little old family red in there. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at uh, Reno's pedigree here, and I notice he's a grandson of Cotton's Bullet. Yep. Uh, do you think that was pretty good blood? Uh, I know there's still some of it around today, down from that. Yeah, a Bullet wasn't much himself, but he was a pretty good producing dog. Uh, his daddy, the old Reno dog, mm -hmm. was, was a... He wasn't bred that much, but he was he was a good he was a good pit dog. I saw him in fact I saw he fought his first fight, say was my first convention fight ever fight convention was uh same time first match at Rito over you know fought. Mm -hmm. but he beat me out for best dog of the show. He did. Yeah. Um, and for the fact that he he had a he had a harder fight, his dog quit, but he had a harder fight, you know, up till the dog did quit. That's why the judges said they picked him. My, my dog, old Pat, fought a dead game dog out of Oklahoma, and uh, he 
he ever did quit. He took his last steps, tried to cross, fell down about halfway across the pit. Yeah. But uh, anyway, they gave it to Reno. And, uh, and they fought him down there. And lose out a couple more times. And Cotton did them, bought him. First, and then they, <coughs> they fought him. Uh, Joe Corvino beat him. Uh, Sonny Sykes, actually. Sonny Sykes. Sonny was Joe's protege. Right. And uh, beat him with Corvino's Teddy. He did? Yeah. Well, I've heard of Teddy. I believe it was Teddy. Yeah. And uh, I may be wrong, so don't go. Uh, I got <laughs> thinking about it. It I, may be Corvino. I, I don't think there's anybody around that could correct you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I just let it go that way. I can't. I'm not think, sure. I don't no. think anybody's going to write in and say, oh, yeah. About it. You know? Yeah, Sonny might. Sonny <laughs> might. You know, I, he's not been out of the dogs a while. I, I haven't. Well, but I heard he was training racehorses for millionaires or something. He was well, out of it a long time. But, uh, yeah, somebody, he got, he got somebody. back in for a few years, but then he got in quite a bit of trouble. Did he? Yeah. Well, I didn't know. I know somebody yeah. told me back there, said, well, they thought he had a few dogs now. But I haven't I, seen or heard anything of said in he was, years. He was matching a few and breeding a few there uh, a while back. It's been six, seven years ago, but then he got quite a bit of trouble. We well, beat his old uh, Carvina's patches for him in New Orleans years ago with Lil. I had sold Lil to Leo and Jimmy Taylor, mm -hmm. one of Leo's proteges, and uh, Jimmy actually ended up with it. They bought three dogs from me at the same time, which was Snow and Snow's mother, Polly, old Polly, and Leo. Well, they ended up, uh, Taylor took Leo, and Leo kept Snow and Polly. And he had matched for just nearly a year. That next fall, uh, they did match, and they, the show was. and the California bitch. Yeah. Uh, do you remember how they were bred or what bloodlines? Yeah. Were? Black, Big Black, he was the Lorman brothers. They lived there out of Lafayette. 
they got him from Hanson's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Old Ma and Pa Hanson used to have dogs down there at mm -hmm. uh, Robstown. Down there close to, what's Mike's last name? I never can think of it. Partington? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think and he... He knows He that. lives there at uh, the carpet, I guess he calls home, mm -hmm. doesn't he? Yeah, Rob's town anyways, right out there, you know, yeah. small town out from. They had dogs for years. Basically, most of their stuff was Jim Williams breeding. Right. Heavy Jim Williams. <laughs> and anyway, uh, that's who the alarm was. They bought several dogs from the Hansons when mm -hmm. they... And they did well. They they bought the old Red Man, handsome Red Man dog, Kevin. What fought was him the, and fought him. Yeah. What was the foundation of those old Jim Williams dogs? Uh, some of it was the old Lightner strain, uh, which is the same dogs that ended up producing the. What they later called the old family red, right. red nose, uh, was those Leitner dogs, and that had Colby in it. See, mm -hmm. yeah. Bill Leitner. Everything seems to go back to Colby sooner or later. Bill Leitner had the he'd had a dog before that, that John B. had bred. The dog was a good dog himself, and then he had crossed him with this stuff, and it it showed good. So uh, anyway, uh, in fact, I've got an old pedigree somewhere in it. Uh, Kobe made this breeding this next time expressly for like, mm -hmm. in other words, re a repeat breeding. So he could send Lightner a male pup. 